so whether you are building the next big e-commerce platform or social media platform or a distributed system um, you are going to hit a point where a single database instance won't just cut it anymore okay so that's where the sardine comes into picture so grab your cup of coffee i have my cup of coffee sit back and let's start hey everyone welcome back to the channel so today we are going to deep dive into something interesting okay that plays a critical role in scaling your database for large large scale applications and the topic name is database sardine so we are going to break down what sardine is and why is it important all right and how it works and even discuss uh, different type of sardine strategies so before we get too technical uh, let's understand what sardine really means all right so in the simplest form sardine is a database architecture pattern that splits your large database into smaller and more manageable pieces okay we call this smaller pieces as sats um each sat is essentially a separate database and collectively they handle the full load of your entire database all right now imagine you are running a huge e-commerce platform with millions of users okay and thousands of transactions every second so a single database instance might just quickly become a bottleneck and overwhelm so by sharding the database you distribute the load across multiple smaller databases now each sad is responsible for a portion of the data but uh, the question is why do you even need sharding well as your data grows and the number of requests to your databases increases right so things like latency response times and performance become a bottleneck and uh, they start to degrade basically okay so this happens because a single database can handle only so much traffic uh, before it becomes a bottleneck all right so you could think of uh, vertically scaling the single instance by increasing the cpu or increasing the ram or the storage of our single uh, big database server but there is a limit to that right i mean plus uh, this approach can get too costly uh, very soon so instead uh, we can try horizontal scaling Uh, which is what sardine does actually and uh, allows us to add more machines to our system rather than overloading a single machine all right now multiple databases or sats can handle the load in parallel now sardine is not one size fits all wala thing okay so depending on our data the traffic pattern and the uh, amount of load that we get right and the uh, type of queries that we run frequently on our database Sharding is divided into multiple uh, techniques. It has different type of strategies. So uh, let's discuss about the common ones. And let me just change the slide. Uh, so the first one is the range-based sharding. All right. So this is one of the simplest methods, right? I mean, here you divide the data into into sets based on a range of values. All right. For example, if uh, our data is a user database, we have a table in our user database. Uh, sorry, we have a user table in our database. and uh, what we can do we can uh, break that number of users into uh, ranges and put users with ids 1 to 1000 in one set and 1000 1 to 2000 in another and so on so well uh, this seems simple but it is a major downside okay and because if one of the ranges becomes hot for example all our new users are in a single range and uh, let's say old users are not that active in our application then maximum load will come to this uh, sad to only which makes it a hot spot all right uh, and th this sad could get overloaded while others are underutilized all right so to solve the problem of hot spots which we encounter in range based sadding we have next technique which is called a hash based sadding okay now in this uh, in this method a hash function is applied to a sharding key for example in our case our sharding key is the user id okay based on the user id you want to uh, divide a database into multiple sets and we are using a hash function called modulo 3 simple hash function we are using just takes the user id as the input uh, divides it by 3 and gives the remainder as the output so this is our simple hash function and the result determines which set the data should go into for example here we are using a simple hash function id modulo 3 which we decide which set the data should go into all right so this ensures that the data is spread more evenly across sets for example if we have uh, three users to insert in our database let's say one user comes with user id 13 and we apply this hash function to this user id 13 so 13 modulo 3 is 1 so the hash value is 1 that's why we 
put that user in this uh, sad one i mean uh, this instance of the database okay now let's say another user comes with uh, id is equal to 12 so i 12 modulo 3 is 0 so the hash value is 0 so that user gets into this set okay now let's say we have another user with id 14 so similarly 14 uh, modulo 3 is uh, 2 so the hash value is 2 so it go, goes into inside this set okay so even though it ensures that data is spread more evenly across all the sets instead of overloading a single uh, set there is a trade off okay so it can be more complex to implement first of all and range queries can be tricky now what is a range query so since the data is distributed norm randomly across sets right retrieving a range of records for example uh, get all the users where the id is in between 1000 to 2000 so in that case you are required to query multiple sets because for example 1000 uh, user 1000 will be in this side 1001 will be in this side 1002 will be in this side okay so as the users are distributed uh, evenly across all the sets right? so range query this kind of range queries becomes a bottleneck and becomes complex and inefficient to execute all right so in that case we the system or the server has to perform a scatter gather operation so what do we mean by scatter gather operation in a scatter gather operation uh, it sends the query to all the sets okay the, let's say we have a server here for example uh, for example this is our server okay so what it will do uh, it will send the request to all the sets okay about the query uh, we have a range query to collect uh, all the users between range 1 and 1000 to 2000 so what it will do the server will send a request to all the sets combine them into a final result and send it to the application uh, back so while this works this it's not the efficient technique right so minimizing this type of queries is the key so now the next technique that we have uh, in our plate is geography based setting let me just change the slide so as the name suggests this method divides the data based on ge geographic regions okay for example you we might have all our asian users in one side and american users in another side and let's say european users in another side right so this approach is great for global applications so where we want to keep the data geographically close to our users for faster access all right now our managing cross region queries will be a little bit inefficient and um, difficult complex to implement for example if we want to compare sales data among asian users and uh, american users then we have to basically execute queries on two sets which uh, reside in different regions okay so that was about the three frequently used setting strategies so now let's discuss how does sad routing work i mean how does the server decide we said to send a query for execution for example how does the server will decide which side I, should I send a query for execution? That's known as SAD routing or SADing routing. Okay. So this video might get a bit little bit lengthy because we will be covering multiple topics and we'll be covering all the aspects of uh, database SADing. So please bear with me. Okay. So the decision making process for the SADing routing lies on the SADing strategy that we have implemented and the SADing key that determines how the data is distributed across all the sets. Now, what is the setting key? In our case, we have taken user ID as the setting key. So, by definition, um, setting key is the primary factor that is used to determine the correct set for a given query. Again, setting key is the primary factor which is used to determine the correct set for a given query. All right. For example, it is typically a set of columns or a single column. In our case, we have taken user ID as you can see. Uh, that defines how the data is split across multiple sets. Generally, when the server processes a DB query, right, uh, the query will often contain the value of the setting key. For example, we have this query, for example, let's say we, we go to the above slide. And for example, we have this query, right, select star from users where ID is equal to 1005. In our case, setting key is the user ID and the value of the setting key, which is the value of the user ID is 1005, which allows the system to map this value to a corresponding set. Okay. For example, uh, in our case, user ID is one one double zero five. So we can determine which set contains the data for that uh, user based on the setting strategy applied. So in different type of setting strategies, setting routing process works differently. For example, in a range based setting, it's quite easy. I mean, the server just checks the value of the setting key 
uh, which is uh, in our case uh, user id is 1005 and it looks up which range it falls into okay and routes the query to the correct sat now we can maintain a lookup table for this information uh, stating ki sat 0 contains user from user id 1 to 1000 sat 1 contains user from 1001 1 to 2 2000 right like this we can maintain a lookup table to get this information so in range based sharding it is quite easy uh, because uh, if the user id is 1 1005 and we know that users from 1 to 001 to 2000 are present in sad1 using that lookup table so we can and the server can send that query to sad1 directly to get all the data about this particular user okay now in hash based sharding the server applies a hash function to the sharding key value For example, let's say the query is select star from users where id is equal to 13. In our case, the sharding key is user id and the value is 13. Uh, so the hash function will be applied on this user id 13, and the uh, output of this hash function is one. So this result one will be used uh, to calculate which star to send the query to. So the query will go to sad one. So the server decides that the query will be sent to sad one. Uh, now in case of geography based routing let's let me change the slide in this case the system routes queries or request based on the location of the user who is making the request now how do we determine the location of a user so that could be determined using the ip address uh, of his network or uh, with some metadata that is involved in the request or based on the dns like amazon.in or amazon.eu right uh, like that we can uh, determine which server to uh, or which sad in a particular ge- geographical location to send the request to all right for example if a user in mumbai logs into an e-commerce application so based on its ip address which is geolocated in india right mumbai is located in india the system can uh, route the login request to the sad which resides in this uh, asian region okay that's how the routing in geography based sharding works yeah so that's how the sad routing works now the interesting part is let's let's discuss the use cases of different type of sharding techniques okay so this is one of the interesting part because we now we know about all the sharding techniques so now it's important to understand in which case we want to use which type of sharding technique all right now if we talk about range based sharding so range based sharding is ideal for applications where data can be naturally divided into ranges because the name itself contains range based sharding right so for example if the data can be divided into continuous ranges like uh, time stamp right for example transactions by date or ids that grow incrementally okay so basically range based sharding is perfect for sequential data so think of applications like time series databases or financial systems wherever the data grows incrementally over time so this strategy is also a great fit when your queries frequently need to access a specific uh, database instance in your uh, database cluster uh, and they need to access specific ranges of data basically so in this case range based sharding is uh, quite helpful why because in range based sharding querying a range of values means only one or few sets needs to be accessed okay making the system more efficient for range queries like uh, fetch all the orders from Uh, all the f- orders after january 24 or fetch all the orders made in the last 7 days right or get all the users with id between 1 to 1000 so if your if your application requires to execute this kind of queries frequently it will be helpful if you go for range range based sharding now in case of hash based sharding so hash based approach is uh, you know best suited for systems with large volume of write heavy operations okay the system switch incorporate uh, a heavy amount of write heavy operations where each query i mean the query that the system processes usually accesses a single uh, sad or single instance of the database based on a unique key in in that case has where sharding can be helpful for example use this strategy okay when your application predominantly performs point queries focus on this term point queries what do you mean by point queries now point queries are the queries to retrieve a single record based on a unique key for, for example select star from users where id is equal to 13 here we are concerned about a particular users we are pointing to a particular user this is known as point queries so fetching a users profile by user id or fetching a single product detail when you uh, visit an e-commerce site you go to the product detail page right where the entire details of that single product is given uh, so in those in those cases where the um, application requires to perform a lot of point queries okay compared to other type of queries in that case hash based sharding is 
uh, very helpful to use okay but uh, there is one downside as we have already discussed in hash based sharding range queries are inefficient to uh, inefficient to execute right so we'll need to perform scatter gather operation as we discussed earlier uh, to handle this issue so next up is geography based sharding in uh, geography based sharding so this geography based sharding is ideal for applications with a global uh, user base okay if you are running an application which has a worldwide user base so in this case geography based sharding can be helpful because there keeping the data close to the user's physical location is quite important so this strategy is co commonly used in global applications like social media platforms or streaming services right content delivery platforms so these are some of the use cases uh, of different type of sharding techniques so there are few challenges of uh, sharding as well so if we talk about the challenges of sharding the first one is increased complexity because managing multiple databases is definitely harder and complex than managing one right so next up is the data consistency issue because keeping the data in all of our sets in sync um, especially in a distributed system can be a little bit tricky okay now the third challenge that comes is in rebalancing sets um, because as the data grows right you may need to split or merge the sets okay so this can be a time consuming process next thing is cross set queries um, because in in a situation if you are required to query multiple sets which we saw in the case of uh, hash based sharding uh, while performing range queries so in that case joining data across multiple sets can slow down our system uh, significantly and require special handling so that was about uh, the entire discussion uh, on database sharding so let me just summarize a bit whatever we have discussed uh, so far so to qu quickly summarize sharding helps you scale our database horizontally by distributing data across multiple smaller nodes it is known as uh, uh, sats right so there are different uh, sharding strategies as we discussed there is range based sharding there is hash based sharding there is geography based sharding right now sad routing next concept we discussed is about the sad routing which ensures queries go to the uh, correct side based on the request or the requested query okay then we discussed about the use cases and challenges of uh, sharding also because sharding comes with trade offs so yeah i hope this video helped you clarify the concept of sharding so if you have any questions about whatever we discussed in this video so far so put it in the comment section and i'll be sure to answer it um so if you found this uh, video helpful hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for such tech breakdowns and more in depth tech content like this okay so see you in the next one thank you